Dear respected elders and brothers, <coughs> continuing with the sifat and the qualities of Jannah, which we were discussing a week ago, that many a times we hear so much about the dunya, so much about the benefits of the different facilities, faculties, comforts of this dunya that we forget about akhirat. Then our heart lingers towards the dunya. In Arabic, the heart is called qalbun. Ulama say, why is it called qalb? They say, لِأَنَّهُ يَتَقَلَّبْ It keeps changing. The heart keeps changing its desires. We see a nice car, we want the car. We see a nice house, then we want the house also. We see someone who is very popular, someone who is very learned, we want to be like him. The next day we see someone who is very rich and wealthy, we want to be like him. So the heart keeps changing. That is why ulama say, and Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they used to constantly remind themselves about akhirat. Even in the Quran and Ahadith, when you will see different occasions, whenever Allah Ta'ala speaks about the dunya, immediately Allah Ta'ala speaks about the akhirah after that. The reason why is to remind us that akhirat is better than the dunya. No one is saying don't take benefit from the dunya. No one is saying that go into the mountains and live alone and never eat or drink. But while living in this dunya, be mindful and <coughs> conscious of akhirat. And how will that be if we do not make mention of what comfort Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept for us? وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ That in there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept the comfort of everything that you may desire. Our desires are limitless. So why has Allah Ta'ala created such desires within us which we cannot fulfill? There is a place that you can fulfill those desires and that is Jannah. That is Akhirat. In this world, this world is a testing phase, a testing ground. So again and again Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala makes mention. هُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُهُمْ فِي ظِلَالٍ عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ مُتَّكِئُونَ فِيهَا فَاكِهَةٌ وَنَخْلٌ وَرُمَّانٌ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ فَاكِهَةٍ زَوْجَانٌ مُتَّكِئِينَ عَلَى فُرُشٍ بَطَائِنُهَا مِنْ إِسْتَبْرَقٍ وَجَنَى الْجَنَّتَيْنِ دَانٍ Again and again Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala reminds us that what is Jannat? Someone came to the Noon Misri, Rahmatullah Alayhi, this is where we stopped here last, last week, week before last week. Someone came to the Noon Misri, Rahmatullah Alayhi, a woman, and said, describe for me what is Jannat. So he said, لَقَدْ سَأَلْتِ عَنْ عَظِيمٍ You have asked me such a difficult question which is very difficult for me to encompass. فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ لَا يُحِيطُ بِهَا عِلْمُ عَالِمٍ وَلَا يَسِفُهَا وَصْفُ وَاسِفٍ That no one can aptly describe what is Jannat. Even the Prophet ﷺ says, that Allah Ta'ala has kept such things for you in Jannat ma la aynun ra'at that you might, you might see every comfort of this world but you have not yet got the glimpse of Jannat look at the latest cars that are uh, being made now these new drone systems are coming they're saying oh in the future everyone will be flying to their workplace no more getting stuck in traffic and oh, everything whatever you mean in terms of comforts, look at the latest technology and the modern comforts they are using in hotels and uh, different, different places, villas. You'll see, even the toilet seat is made out of gold. A few days ago, someone put a toilet seat with a sofa. Subhanallah. So the shaitan's house is being beautified and the masjids are empty. The toilet is the house of shaitan. I like to divert Allah Ta'ala make me mock for wasting your time you know you'll be like Mawlana he just says whatever he wants back in the days people used to go to the jungle to the forest to go to the toilet so the house of shaitan was where? 
in the forest, away from the village, away from the towns. So early morning people used to go relieve themselves, then they used to be so healthy whole day they never needed to go again. Imam Ghazali rahmatullah says, once I started visiting the toilet three times a week. At one point in my life I started visiting the toilet three times a week, not a day. So someone told me that, do you have diarrhea? Do you have diarrhea? I said, why? He said, I've seen you three times in the week, you, you're going to the toilet. That's how healthy people were. They didn't need to visit the toilet much. They would eat just sufficient to keep their back straight and then move on with work. It would burn. Then the toilets came into our garden. So be like, oh, modern day. Back in the days, that was the modern day, modern age. That now we have a ready-made toilet built in our garden. So we don't have to go all the way to the forest. Just open the kitchen door and you behind. And this was 50, 60 years ago, not long back. And then, so the shaitan came in our garden. And now the shaitan has come in our house. The toilet is in the house. New day and age. And now even modern, they have an ensuite. What's ensuite? Shaitan suite. That the toilet is in the, in the bedroom. So you don't have to move. You don't have to go anywhere. So that, now there's family problems and everyone is fighting and this and that. Be like, why? Because you brought the shaitan in the house yourself. Allah Ta'ala save us. Think about it later on, inshallah. I don't say go back to the jungle. Stay as you are, but just come to the masjid, read your salah, read your Quran, shaitan will go away, inshallah. So where were we? So he said, لا يحيطها علم عالم ولا يصفها واسف That jannat cannot be aptly described. Every comfort you see in this world is nowhere close to jannat. But because you have asked, let me give you a little bit of understanding. So he says, إِنَّ فِي الْجَنَّةِ لَمَرَجًا مِنْ ذَهَبٍ مِنْ فِضَّةٍ بَيْضًا That in jannah there is a huge land, a plain land, the ground of it is made of silver. فِي وَسَطِ الْجَنَّةِ قَصْرٌ مِنْ ذَهَبٍ أَصْفَرٍ And in this huge plain land of silver, in the center of it, there is a palace which is made of gold, striking gold. في وسط القصر قبة من ياقوتة أحمر and in the center of this palace there's a dome like how we have a dome mashallah which is not showing on the outside one day inshallah it will show on the outside as well so there's a dome which is made of red ruby in the center of this and what else is in this jannah that in this jannah في وسط القصر سَرِيرٌ تَحْتَهَا أَرْبَعَةُ أَنْهَارٌ That there is a bed in the center of this dome <coughs> under which four canals, four rivers are flowing. The river of milk and the river of honey and the river of water and the river of wine which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention in the Qur'an. Different places in the Qur'an Allah ta'ala makes mention of the rivers of Jannah. These days when we go for an excursion or we go for a tour what we want to see? We want to see water flowing, we want to see waterfalls, we want to see uh, beautiful streams. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept that for us in Jannah. And now the best part, best part for you and I as men that وَعَلَى السَّرِيرِ جَارِيَةً And upon this bed will be a woman. Not the ordinary woman of this dunya. The woman of Jannat. وَجْهِهَا مِن نُورِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى that the nur of her face will be from the nur of Allah directly. No makeups. Let me go to the uh, makeup market and buy this and buy that and buy that. These days people get married on makeups. <laughs> After all the makeup, you'll be like, wow, she's so beautiful. The next day you realize it was a deception. <laughs> the shower washed it all away. People have sued their wives because of this. So the beauty of her face is from the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Min rijliha ila rukbatiha. What are we made of? We're made of sand, of soil. Min salsalim, min hamaim maknoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have been created from a knocking soil, clay. And imagine 
which all that Allah that had made such beauty from clay, what beauty He will make from musk and, and saffron. So from her leg to her knees is made out of saffron. وَمِن رُكْبَتَيْهَا إِلَىٰ ثَدْيَيْهَا مِن From her leg to her knees is made out of musk. وَمِن رُكْبَتَيْهَا إِلَىٰ ثَدْيَيْهَا مِن من الزعفران from her knee to her chest is made out of saffron and from her chest to her neck is made of amber and from her neck to her head min kafur in abyad of pure white camphor her hair the strand every strand of her hair if it was brought to this world it would make the entire world radiant with fragrance the whole world would be fragrant. لَوْ بَدَا مِعْصَمُهَا فِي السَّمَاءِ لَأَشْرَقَتْ وَأَنَارَ In the dark nights, if she was to put her fingertip in this world, the whole world would brighten up. <coughs> Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu anhu says that a woman of Jannat, if her fingertip is so beautiful, imagine her face, how beautiful it will be. When the Jannati will look at her, for 40 years, he will not turn her gaze from her. For 40 years. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept for us. Allah ta'ala again and again mentioned in the Quran, وَحُورٌ عِينٌ كَأَمْثَالِ اللُّؤْلُؤِ الْمَكْنُونِ That we have created the حُورُ Ain for you. كَأَمْثَالِ اللُّؤْلُؤِ الْمَكْنُونِ They are as if they are pearls. مَكْنُونِ They have kept hidden. You know, a precious pearl is always kept hidden. No one knows where it is. People say it's on the queen's crown. Allah alam. But generally it's hidden. That one is just to show everyone that we have such a pearl. In another place Allah Ta'ala says, وَكَوَاعِبَ أَتْرَابَ عُرُبًا أَتْرَابَ Ask Mulana, what's the translation? He'll tell you. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, فِيهِنَّ خَيْرَاتٌ حِسَانٌ And we have kept Khairat, Khairat, beautiful character. Hisan, beautiful looks. Today, those of you who are aware of the society that is around us, if the looks are beautiful, the character is the other way. And if the character is beautiful, sometimes the looks are the other way. Best of both. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Waladaina mazid. That we have created the Hurul Ain for you. What is Hurul Ain? Inna fil Jannati la Hur, Yukalu la Hal Aina, An Yaminiha Sabaona Alpha Khadiman, An Shimaliha Sabaona Alpha Khadiman. That in Jannah there is a Hur whose name is Aina. Aina, the one with wide eyes. So the Arabs, they would, they would give an example of a woman with a deer. You know, he say, My dear. My darling, my dear. Why, why do you call it deer for? Because the eyes of the deers are beautiful. And there's poetry written up just upon the deers. And then they say that my, my beloved is exactly like the deer. The way how she walks and the, the way how she talks and the way how she looks. So Allah Ta'ala says we have created her with those looks. Striking looks. In the hadith the Prophet Sallallahu says if a person, if moat if death did not have death, if death was not killed on the day of Qiyamah, when the Jannati will look at this woman, he will die out of ecstasy, out of that happiness. He will look at her for 40 years. And this Aina, just to pamper her, look after her, you know, like how we have these celebrities. Who, who cares about celebrities? Those who do not even know how to wash themselves in the toilet. They have 70,000 people serving her on the right hand side, 70,000 angels on the left hand side, and she walks in Jannah. She is the queen. Well, the, the women of, of the dunya will be the queens. Just now we can't go home. We'll be like, well, you, you've taken us out of your bayan. The women of the dunya will be the queens. But in her Jannah, she will be the queen. Aina. <coughs> So for 40 years he will just look at her and then she will tell him that what's wrong, what's wrong with this man? 
He's just looking at me for 40 years. So she will ask him a question that don't you desire me? Don't you like me? And he says, of course I desire you, I like you. So there was one Morana giving bayan and he says for 40 years he will just look at the hoor of Jannat. So one old chacha stood up and says, after that 40 years what will happen? He says, after that 40 years what will happen? You have to go to Jannat for that. You have to come for Fajr Salah for that. You have to leave your comfort zones for that. Then you will know what will happen after that 40 years. So while he will be engaged with this hoor, another hoor will come. Her name is Laiba. Laiba is translated into a player. She has playful skill. And look how the Prophet has, has mentioned Jannah to us. Today all we know is music, songs, celebrities, and this movie, that movie, this pop star, that pop star, this bazaar, that market, this hotel, that... We're engrossed in the dunya. Speak about Akhirat. Speak about Jannat. Speak to our children about Jannat. And you'll be surprised how children yearn for Jannat at the age of seven, eight, nine. Talk to them about Jannat. So this Laiba will come and she will call him from the top. Now Allah knows how she will call, maybe a WhatsApp call or, you know, these days WhatsApp is, everyone knows you're online, so then you go on to signal. No one can check that you are online. You can go on to other channels. No one, you don't want to know anyone. You don't want to tell anyone that you are online. So she will call him and say that, don't you desire me? You're busy with Laiba for so many, for Aina for so many years. Come to me. So he said, of course. When he will go to her, he will find her more beautiful than the other one. And then this will carry on. There's another hoor that is called Mardiya. Mardiya, the one that will please you. So she will call out after 40 years that I've been waiting for you. Where are you? So one after the other. There was one Mufti Sahib. He's got, he's got a couple of wives. So someone told him, Mufti Sahib, I feel you very sorry. He said, why? He says, one day you go to this house. Then you have to travel 10 miles, you know, 15 miles to go to the another house next day. Then you have to travel another 15 miles, go to another house. He said, no, 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 don't feel me sorry. I feel you sorry. He said, why? He says, how long you married? He said, 10 years. He says, one day you go to the one house, the next day to the same house, the third day to the same house, one year, two years, five years, you're still in the same house. So Allah Ta'ala has kept variety for you in Jannah. I'm not giving any ideas. Please, don't blame me for anything. Allah has kept variety for us in Jannah. And there's another hoor in Jannah which Allah Ta'ala says, وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٌ And we have even more beauty than that, even more greater than that, even more astonishing things than that. So when she will call out, so this person will be like, who are you? So she will say that I am from the ones which Allah has told in the Quran, وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٌ This is just the women of Jannah. Then there's the other ahadith mentioning the bazaars of Jannah. Every Friday there will be a bazaar in Jannah. You know, on Friday Allah Ta'ala says that leave everything. That leave the dunya on Friday. Come to the masjid, listen to the dhikr of Allah, listen to the khutbah, pray your salah. And then go out and earn your livelihood. So Allah Ta'ala has stopped us from the bazaars of the dunya on Fridays. In replacement for that, Ulama say Allah Ta'ala will give us a bazaar on Friday in Jannah, a special bazaar where a person can go and shop his beauty. He can shop his looks. Today what we are doing, we, we try this anti-aging creams and this cream and that cream and nothing works. And the companies keep getting richer and richer and our, our skin becomes more and more wrinkled. <coughs> More and more chemicals are inside our bodies. In Jannah, the person will be able to choose that I would like to look like this today. And automatically, he will be turned into that. When he will return back to his palaces, his wives will look at him and they will say, Wallahi, wallahi, laqad zitta husnan sab'ina mirara. That you have become 70 times more handsome than what you were before. So, she, so he will tell her, 
that Allah's person, you have become 70 times more beautiful than what you were before. Just like how Allah has no ending, the, the bounties of Jannah also has no ending. It will continue. It is beyond our imagination. But for that, my dear respected elders and brothers, Allah Ta'ala says, وَلَدَارُ الْآخِرَةِ هِيَ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى That the, the world, the life hereafter is the ultimate life, is the everlasting life. It is there forever and forever. Don't destroy yourself in this dunya. What is dunya? مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ الْمَالُ وَالْبَنُونَ زِينَةُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتِ خَيْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ أَمَلًا And what will earn you the, the akhirat is baqiyatu salihat The good deeds that you will do in this world, you know, in Urdu they say, Neki kar darya medal. The good deeds that you do in this world, it will benefit you in akhirat. In this world, whether the benefit comes or not, who cares? As long as I'm performing my Fajr Salah, you know, sometimes we come to Fajr Salah, we'll be like, Allah Ta'ala says he'll make the risk easy for us. The next day went bad, the third day we're not there for Fajr. Subhanallah. Allah says he'll make risk easy for you. Continuously perform Fajr. Allah will test you as well. But that Fajr will, will come in your grave also, it will come in your Qayyamat also, it will come in Jannah as well. May Allah Ta'ala give me you and one and all the ability as much as I try to save time. <coughs>